O. Henry's American Scenes. Published by IBC Publishing. The Gift of the Magi. One dollar and eighty-seven cents. That was all. She had put it aside, one cent, and then another, and then another, in her careful buying of meat and other food. Della counted it three times, one dollar and eighty-seven cents, and the next day would be Christmas. There was nothing to do but fall on the bed and cry, so Della did. While the lady of the home is slowly growing quieter, we can look at the home. Furnished rooms at a cost of eight dollars a week. There is little more to say about them. In the hall below was a letter box too small to hold a letter. There was an electric bell, but it could not make a sound. Also, there was a name beside the door, Mr. James Dillingham Young. When the name was placed there, Mr. James Dillingham Young was being paid thirty dollars a week. Now, when he was being paid only twenty dollars a week, the name seemed too long and important. It should perhaps have been Mr. James D. Young, but when Mr. James Dillingham Young. Entered the furnished rooms, his name became very short indeed. Mrs. James Dillingham Young put her arms warmly about him and called him Jim. You have already met her; she is Della. Della finished her crying and cleaned the marks of it from her face. She stood by the window and looked out with no interest. Tomorrow would be Christmas Day, and she had only one dollar and eighty-seven cents with which to buy Jim a gift. She had put aside as much as she could for months, with this result: twenty dollars a week is not much. Everything had cost more than she had expected. It always happened like that. Only one dollar and eighty-seven cents to buy a gift for Jim, her Jim. She had had many happy hours planning something nice for him, something nearly good enough, something almost worth the honor. Of belonging to Jim, there was a looking glass between the windows of the room. Perhaps you have seen the kind of looking glass that is placed in eight-dollar furnished rooms. It was very narrow; a person could see only a little of himself at a time. However. If he was very thin and moved very quickly, he might be able to get a good view of himself. Della, being quite thin, had mastered this art. Suddenly, she turned from the window and stood before the glass. Her eyes were shining brightly, but her face had lost its color. Quickly. She pulled down her hair and let it fall to its complete length. The James Dillingham Youngs were very proud of two things which they owned. One thing was Jim's gold watch; it had once belonged to his father, and long ago it had belonged to his father's father. The other thing. Was Della's hair? If a queen had lived in the rooms near theirs, Della would have washed and dried her hair where the queen could see it. 
Della knew her hair was more beautiful than any queen's jewels and gifts. If a king had lived in the same house with all his riches, Jim would have looked at his watch every time they met. Jim knew that no king had anything so valuable. So now Della's beautiful hair fell about her, shining like a falling stream of brown water. It reached below her knee. It almost made itself into a dress for her. And then she put it up on her head again, nervously and quickly. Once she stopped for a moment and stood still while a tear or two ran down her face. She put on her old brown coat. She put on her old brown hat. With the bright light still in her eyes, she moved quickly out the door and down to the street. Where she stopped, the sign said, Mrs. Sofroni, hair articles of all kinds. Up to the second door, Della ran and stopped to get her breath. Mrs. Sofroni, large, too white, cold-eyed, looked at her. Will you buy my hair? asked Della. I buy hair, said Mrs. Sofroni. Take your hat off and let me look at it. Down fell the brown waterfall. Twenty dollars, said Mrs. Sofroni, lifting the hair to feel its weight. Give it to me quick, said Della. Oh, and the next two hours seemed to fly. She was going from one shop to another to find a gift for Jim. She found it at last. It surely had been made for Jim and no one else. There was no other like it in any of the shops, and she had looked in every shop in the city. It was a gold watch chain, very simply made. Its value was in its rich and pure material. Because it was so plain and simple, you knew that it was very valuable. All good things are like this. It was good enough for the watch. As soon as she saw it, she knew that Jim must have it. It was like him. Quietness and value. Jim and the chain both had quietness and value. She paid $21 for it, and she hurried home with the chain and 87 cents. With that chain on his watch, Jim could look at his watch and learn the time anywhere he might be. Though the watch was so fine, it had never had a fine chain. He sometimes took it out and looked at it only when no one could see him do it.